What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, way back when, I created this, which was actually the first multi-board I ever made. Now, this bad boy's got an ESP32 right there, an NRF over there, and up top is this OLED screen. Now, I was really just using it, you know, to have this cool little logo on it, but everybody was laughing at me because they were like, why are you using that board for this? Now, at that point in time, I had no idea what Laura actually was. But nowadays, it seems like the whole topic of Laura is taking the entire hobbyist world by storm. Storm. And that's all due to the help of a project called Meshtastic. What Meshtastic aims to do is take little small LoRa radios like this and create its entirely own, entirely off-grid network. And today, I'm going to walk you through every step of the process to make your very own Meshtastic device just like this one. So then you get to explore the entire world of off-grid communication, creating your very own Mesh network. All right, let's do this. All right, so first of all, I guess the question is, what is LoRa? Well, LoRa stands for long range. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Basically, LoRa is just a wireless technology that uses licensed free frequency bands in order to send small packets of data over long ranges. Now, over here in North America, we actually use the 915 megahertz frequency band in order to send our communications. Our friends over in Europe can actually use either the 433 band or the 868 megahertz band. Individual results may vary, so you know, do some research on what band you want to use to figure out which one's going to work best for you. Now, what's great about LoRa is that it uses really low cost radios to communicate over distances that you typically couldn't actually do. Now, it does this by creating a mesh of nodes. The more nodes you have, the further distance you can actually spread out. In fact, there's actually a user named Kbox Labs that was able to create a mesh network that extended to 254 kilometers. That is 158 miles for all of us who use those freedom units. What's great about the LoRa network is it actually figures out what the most efficient distance between you and the person you're communicating are and will hop from node to node accordingly. And what's great is that it's completely off grid. As long as there's power to your node, it can communicate with other nodes. I have a feeling by the time this video is over, I'm going to say the word node so often it's going to lose all meaning. What's also great about a lot of these units is that this little guy right there is an ESP32 S3. So what does that mean? It means that we have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That means it's super easy to connect these devices to either your home network, which we'll talk about later, or your phone. But what's great about these devices, they do not require any sort of internet or of cellular data. They work entirely on their own. Now, obviously this little guy doesn't have a keyboard or any way of actually interacting with it. So yeah, being able to pair it directly to your phone using the Meshtastic app is absolutely awesome. Now I've picked up a ton of these Helltech V3 boards. They're super cheap and the community loves them. There's a ton of development and a ton of 3D files for them. Now you can actually buy them with their own little case. This little ugly guy right here, I mean, it works, it's got a really small antenna, but if you can't 3D print your own case, it's a really good option. Even in the back right there, you can see you have the access to the JST connector for the battery. So I guess you just kind of like tape it on there or something, but hey, it'll still work. And definitely there's no reason to be intimidated by these. They come in a case that has the antenna and it's even got header pins on there. But guess what? You don't have to do anything with the headers. There's no soldering, there's nothing. It's super simple, it's super easy. Now you can power these things by USB-C or with a 1.2 JST connector. Now I actually picked up a bunch of these little guys too. These are 1100 milliamp hour batteries which fit great into this little case right here. Now, I've really been digging this little tiny case by Simon Muzi. It's real small. It's got a small antenna, but it's great for carrying with you. You can throw it on a keychain. And yeah, if you're going to be using Meshtastic or something, this thing's absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. One other quick thing I always like to mention about JST connections on batteries. Now, there does not seem to be any sort of consistency when it comes to the polarity of the JST connectors on these batteries. Is the red wire on the left? Is the black wire? Nobody knows. If you don't know for yourself, you can always look at the board. A lot of times, it'll say positive negative on there or if it comes with a JST connector like this just match the wires. Now the Helltech V3 is one of the most popular devices not only because of its expandability and its low power consumption but also because of all the cool 3D files that the community's made. Now I just showed you my favorite small one but this guy right here is pretty cool. This will fit a 3000 milliamp hour battery. 
Now this case is by Tony G and it's super cool and I got it printed in one of my favorite colors is Bamboo's Translucent Pet G. I think this one's teal. And then we have this guy too. This one actually just sits on my desk, hence why it's plugged in. It's got no battery. It's cool little form factor. It sits right on my desk and I can see it from all times. This one's actually hooked up to Wi-Fi. Again, I'll talk about that in a minute. And that's just a really tiny little segment of all of the cool case files there are for the Helltech D3. I mean, you guys know I'm a 3D printing nerd, so you give me the opportunity to 3D print something, I'm gonna do it. But not everybody has a 3D printer. And sometimes maybe you still wanna print things. Well, guess what? That brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop when it comes to 3D printing, PCB creation, and more. You remember the transparent flipper that we made? Guess what? PCBWay hooked us up with this guy. And you better believe I'm gonna get them to print some really cool cases for these Helltech V3s and my T-Deck. Oh, I can't wait. They're gonna look so cool. But PCBWay is not just 3D printing. They can also help you create a PCB. Like you could create your own lower board. Yeah. You And hey, I know that sounds hard, but that's where PCBWay comes in. They can assist you in every single step of the way. They can help you with the PCB design and assembly, and they can help you print a 3D case for it. And what's great is they also have a module store where you can buy things like LoRa devices. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for almost any project. So head on over to PCBWay.com and find out what's possible. As always, thank you so much to PCBWay for your continued support. Let's get back at it. Now, another direction you could go is actually something like an all-in-one, like this LilyGo T-Deck. Now, this thing's super cool because it's all-in-one. It's got a keyboard, SD card, everything you need, screen. It's really cool. Plus, you can upgrade it to an SMA antenna, which is, I think, a necessary upgrade. Now, these guys run about 60 bucks, and unfortunately, LilyGo has been sold out of these forever. But yeah, this is a super cool case. It fits a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, and it's created by the maker AlleyCat. It's very cool. Now, what's also cool is actually the T-Deck does come with a speaker inside it, but in order to fit it into the small form factor case, I had to remove it to fit the 3,000 milliamp hour battery, which was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because guess what? It fits right inside my Hack RF. Honestly, I've been wanting to put a speaker in my Hack RF since I got it and I just haven't gotten a chance to it. So blessing in disguise. Now, I did also have to supply my own antenna and my own IPEX to SMA adapter. And as always, anytime you're buying anything with an SMA pigtail on it, make sure that it matches your antenna. There is a male and a female version and you need to know the difference. That's what she said. <laughs> And actually this antenna right here, I ordered directly from Rabbit Labs through Amazon. And that's right, Rabbit Labs actually has an Amazon storefront selling antennas and stuff. It's really cool. Just make sure you pick the right frequency range for your region. Now the T-Deck is actually really freaking cool. Let's get a close up and I'll show you what's going on. All right, trying to work with my glare here, but yeah, it's actually got full keyboard right there. And this is actually a little bit of a trackball, so you can actually scroll through the different devices that are on your network. Now you will notice that I have GPS disabled. Actually, I haven't even installed GPS on the unit yet. I probably will in the future, but for now I'm trying to keep it incognito. So yeah, I can actually go ahead and send a message from a different device. And what's up, Swatch fam? That's so cool. I love these things. Keep in mind that device is not connected to the internet, so this is all off grid. Oh yeah, one quick thing about GPS is that GPS is enabled automatically when you set this up. So make sure to turn your GPS location off if you don't want to share that info. Now, in order to hook up one of those Helltech boards to your phone, all you have to do is either pair it with Bluetooth or you can actually connect the Helltech chip directly to your home network. What I like about the second option is that basically as long as I'm within range of my Wi-Fi, I'm connected to the mesh network. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of actually installing this firmware. It's super simple. So let's head down to the desktop but not before plugging in our device to USB-C. This is gonna be the one I'm gonna update right now. And all we gotta do is plug this in, ready to go. All right, so here we are over at flasher.meshtastic.org. If you guys know me, you know I love me a web flasher. So this is gonna be super simple. All we gotta do is select a target device. You can see how many different devices you can pick from. There are a lot. But for now, we're just gonna pick the Helltech V3. Um, we're going to select firmware version. Let's go with a stable version. There's a lot of updates to this firmware. Sometimes things can, you know, not be as stable as others. So we'll stay out of alpha for the moment and stick in stable. From here, we can go ahead and click the flash button. Bunch of information, bug fixes. Let's scroll down and let's see. Click continue. Do, do, do. Don't really need to change much here. It is a good idea to click full erase and install. Click erase flash and install and then just make sure you pick the right port. I always like to unplug the device and then plug it back in to know which one's which for sure. Here we are at COM14. So click on that one, click connect, and it's just gonna go ahead and do its thing. It does not take that long. 
Hey, and just like that, we are all set. Fantastic. And just like that, we're all set. We've got Meshtastic running on our ESP32. Again, with a web flasher, it literally couldn't be any easier. But that doesn't mean we're done yet. We do need to configure it. But guess what? We can do that online too. We can also use an iOS app or an Android app, which are even easier, but we're gonna use the desktop just because it's easier for you guys to see and follow along. So let's go back down to the desktop. All right, so super important. We're gonna go ahead and close Meshtastic Flasher, and we're gonna go to client.meshtastic.org. And all we have to do is click new connection click on serial now i do have two devices connected i'm pretty sure this guy is our brand new meshtastic device so first of all let's update our name to something a little bit more fun squatchy sure why not and the short name is only going to be four digits so um let's see one week later let's call this one small here we go and click save anytime we save things it's going to reboot the device so it might have to reconnect it we'll see what happens all right cool so our device is back up we can click on the configuration button a few important things to notice here first of all position it's going to automatically enable your position so if you don't want to do that and you don't want to let people know your location on the meshtastic app definitely disable this because obviously right here is a map also, you can enable Wi-Fi right here in the network tab. So if you do that, just type in your network name and your password, and it will directly connect to Wi-Fi for you, which is pretty cool. For now, we're gonna leave this disabled, and we're gonna go over here to Laura. So you're gonna see a region code right here for my node is unset. We want it to be US, because again, I'm in the US. Now, don't forget to click the save button in the upper corner, and that'll make sure that the configuration is saved to the device. Now, if you're gonna pair your phone with Bluetooth, you can go over here, and if you want to, you can either select a random pin or you can make a manual pin, whatever your preference. Now, the other thing we want to do to be able to send and receive messages is go over to the channels tab over here. We want to enable uplink and downlink that way that we're going to actually be sending our messages and receiving our messages. Just go ahead and click submit and it's going to do that whole resetting thing again. Don't worry, it's going to reboot every time we make an update. It's normal. And that's it. We already now have a working LoRa device. It's going to use its little antenna to try to find other nodes in our region or if you happen to have your own nodes it'll use those now right now you're full off grid this thing absolutely is not connected to the internet it's not connected to anything i mean it's plugged in right now just so that it has power but yeah it's not using anything but what we can use too is going to be what's called mqtt to really supercharge this guy now what mqtt is message queuing telemetry transport but all that means is we're actually going to use the internet as kind of an intermediary between our nodes and our friends nodes now some people are going to say doesn't that be the purpose this is supposed to be all off grid and while i understand that justification i don't think it does whatsoever because really what we're doing is we're taking my little group of nodes and connecting it to all my friends little group of nodes so remember again this thing is still not connected to the internet at all but i can message people thousands of miles away that i could never do on simply a mesh network all right so i actually filmed this entire part using the web configuration to set up mqtt what i realized is that you can't actually share internet from your computer to the LoRa device so it's completely useless. So what we're gonna do from here is actually use an Android device. It works on iOS. Actually, the app is way better than the desktop device. So use this when you can. All right, so I fired up the Meshtastic app. You can get it from the Play Store or wherever you get your apps from. And then small right here, we'll click on that and we'll see if it connects. If we're lucky, at the top it'll say where it says not connected, it'll actually connect to it. There we are, perfect. We're now connected to the device. So from here, what we'll do is little hamburger menu up here, go to radio configuration and then go to MQTT and it loads right up. You'll notice right now it's not enabled. So if we click MQTT enabled, it's enabled. So you'll notice there's already an address and a login already in there. What's funny is if you uh, show the password, it's large four cats, which is kind of fun. Basically, this is just a standard login. Everybody uses the same login, so everybody's kind of in the same lobby. MQTT and Laura tend to get pretty noisy. There's a lot going on here if you're in the default channel. The other thing we wanna make sure we do is toggle proxy to client enabled. That's what doesn't work on PC, and that's why this whole process didn't work at all when I was doing it on my computer. Now, the other thing to note, which is really cool, is you can change the root topic right now i'm just in msh which is like the lobby for everything it's going to be very noisy and there's a lot going on what i'm going to do is actually just add a channel to it so if we go like this we can add a channel name now i'm going to add my super secret now i'm going to add my super secret channel that we have some people on i'm not going to make it public quite yet but we might down the line so enter that in click enter and then just 
click send and that's it. It should be all set up, all ready to go. Now we'll just go back to the main page for it and wait for this to connect again. Because again, every time we hit update, it restarts. Hey, now we're back at it. Fantastic. And yeah, if we look at the channel long fast right here, you can see these are all the messages I've been getting right over Laura. It's so cool. It's so much fun. I absolutely love this. It's literally just that easy. All you have to do is add a few settings, add a few folders, click on some buttons, and you've got an entirely off-grid network system that you can talk to pretty much anybody you want to. You can have some super small little device like this guy just hanging on your keys or hanging on your backpack. I guess your keys would be really awesome. Awkward. but you can just have it hanging on and then you're just connected to everyone honestly in this day and age it's kind of cool to have a fallback where you know if it comes down to it you can connect and talk to people completely on your own without anybody else's help because remember you can use one of these to connect to another laura device directly so if you and your buddy have one of these you can talk to each other just like a walkie talkie you don't need anything else to do it I know I kind of drone on and on about things like this, but I mean, it's really cool technology and it's really great to make it accessible to everyone. As always, thank you so much for watching this far. Do you have any other gadgets or any other topics you'd like me to discuss? Leave a comment down below. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It means the world to me. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.